Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna share one adjustment that's gonna help you sell more and hopefully double your income. I don't know about you guys, but have you ever had a sale that was a turning point for you? I call these, basically, I call these level up moments. And I believe these level up moments that they can only happen when we're facing adversity. They typically don't happen when everything's going great, right? It's something that challenges us. And I remember one specific level up moment. One of my first level up moments, I was uh, at a door doing face-to-face -face sales. And all of a sudden, John opens the door and I'm going to meet what I believe is John and Rebecca. But John met me at the door and he met me at the door with an established, a well-established frown. Just, you could tell this guy wasn't having a great day. And as we started to talk, he gave me a list of excuses about why he and his wife, they weren't able to sit with me. He said things like the stuff you guys all know, like today isn't a good time. I'm not feeling well. We're leaving in a little bit. We already have something in place. I got, I mean, I got hit with all of them. So at this point, um, I was relatively new in the industry and I was just tired of leaving money on the table. Maybe you feel that way. Maybe you felt that way where you just like, you can't stand no more, right? Where you are done, your back's against the wall and you're just tired of leaving money on the table. Matter of fact, I have these conversations with agents and sometimes they'll talk to me and I'll say, well, um, eventually you're gonna get hungry enough to make a change. And that's where I was. I was hungry enough to make a change. So there's this key thing that happens to making a change. You have to be tired enough of going through the motions to be brave enough to try something new. And maybe that's where you're at. And that's really what this is about. So in my conversation with John, I just said, John, I totally understand. To be honest, I'm really busy too. I have a ton of people to see but I'm guessing you sent this in because you care about your family and you were just a little curious about how these plans work. All I need to do is get you the information. That's it. What you do with it's completely up to you. I'm gonna go get your stuff and I'll be right back. And I turned around and left and I came back and guess what? John let me in. He let me in to talk with him and Rebecca. So we did this sit, we had a great time, we had good conversations and as it turns out, it was great. Uh, they agreed to needing what I had to offer. So they agreed to it and they decided to apply. But as I was filling out this application, John gave me two more excuses about why you couldn't do it. He said, Chris, I don't, I don't like giving out my social security number. Overcome that issue. We continue on with the application. And then he says, Chris, I don't like anybody getting into my bank account, right? So these two issues that pop up, and on the one, I said, hey, John, I totally understand. I usually don't like giving out my social security number either, but this is one of those rare instances where it's just, it's just necessary. The whole point of this policy, based on what we talked about, is making sure Rebecca's taken care of. Is that right? Right, okay. Then I'm assuming that you don't want some other family to receive the $20,000 you're setting aside for Rebecca, do you? No, no, I don't. Well, this is designed to protect you and Rebecca. That's what this is for. So what is your social security number? John, him and huffed or huffed and puffed, whatever he did, didn't blow the house down, but gave me his social security number. So I kept going. So we got to this bank account issue and I said, John, I totally understand. I don't let anybody into my account either. Don't worry about it. Nobody's getting into your account. This is just setting up to be paid automatically by the bank on your behalf. Basically, it's just like writing a check and dating it for later. It's just like that. Again, this whole thing is to protect you and Rebecca. Many policies, whether you know this or not, they lapse because of missed payments due to like a long-term hospitalization. And you and I would both agree that that's when you need the coverage the most, wouldn't you? Well, yeah, that's, that's true. Okay, John, what is your routing number and your account number? Put my head down and, and write these things out. In this instance, this was my level up moment. I got the applications and I even got some hugs at the end of the sit. I don't remember if they gave me like fruits and vegetables, but they really liked me. We got along well. And matter of fact, they're still clients to this day. But I really felt like in that moment, I leveled up and I learned something from this interaction. So what is it I learned? And what is it that you can learn from this? Guys, believe it or not, some people just like complaining. <laughs> That's it. Like this whole video is about that. 
that some people just like complaining. It's that simple. What does that mean for you? It means that a complaint is not an objection. It's not an objection. It may feel like it is, but it isn't. Maybe they're just having a bad day. Maybe they just happen to, you just happen to interrupt an argument. Maybe they're just hangry. It's like that Snickers commercial, or they're just grumpy by nature. It doesn't mean that they don't care about their family or they don't want to do the right thing. They actually, in all practicality, they probably just want to do the right thing, but they need somebody who's qualified to help them make the right decision. Most people want to be guided by someone who knows what they're doing, believe it or not. It's like that nurse who comes in and says, hey, you need to take this medicine. I don't feel like taking my medicine. Well, you got to take this medicine if, you're gonna be, if you want to be better. It's like talking to your kids and your kids saying, I don't like brushing their, my teeth. You're like, hey, if you want to keep those suckers, you got to brush your teeth, right? Like we have to have these honest conversations. A complaint is not an objection. And if you treat it like an objection, if you freak out and you just stare at them and you don't have a path forward through it, then it's going to be a problem. One, one thing I talk to agents when I talk to them during their training, one mantra that I try to just instill in their belief system, and I hope you do it too, nothing is a big deal unless you make it a big deal. If you react like it's a big deal, it's going to be a big deal. When you come across a complaint, this is a simple formula. Acknowledge the complaint, address it, and let's just move forward. Ask for the close. Whatever that close is, whether it's getting in the door, whether it's getting the application, whether it's asking, those are micro closes. Just You're going to ask and you're just going to move forward. So here's an example. I'm busy. It's not a good time. Mr. Smith, I totally understand. I hear that a lot, believe it or not. And I want you to know I'm busy too. I have like 200 people to see. I get it. I'm a busy person. But I tell you what, you probably care about your family. That's why you sent this in. I'm going to go get your stuff. I'll be right back. What you do with it is completely up to you. And then my body turns and I go. That's all it is. It's just moving forward. So one thing I want you guys to understand, complaints are not objections. When you understand this and you act accordingly, I promise you, you'll write more business. All you have to do is this. You just have to practice and be brave enough to act accordingly because it's going to feel a little weird. Some personalities, that's going to be a challenge for you, but you have to be brave enough to put it into action. But the minute you do, you'll realize, you'll see the difference between a real objection and, and just a simple complaint. You just have to practice. If you can do this, you will level up and you will write more business. Hey guys, if you found value in this video, please do us a favor, hit that like and subscribe button. Just, just smash it like the Staples Easy button. Is that a real thing, Adam? Do they still do that? Yes, the Staples Easy button. That was easy. Hit like and subscribe. Turn on your notifications so you can get more goodies from us. And please leave a comment. We want to help you out. Maybe you have a question or you have a thought of something that's working for you. Maybe you've dealt with some complaints that appear to be objections. Throw in something that, that could help our, our listeners or our, our viewers, and we'd love to connect with you. Thanks a lot.